In 2008, NASA had an intriguing question. How do spiders construct their webs in zero gravity? Therefore, they sent two spiders to the International Space Station. The first spider was the main participant, while the second served as a backup in case the first one didn't survive. However, things didn't go according to plan. The backup spider managed to escape from its chamber and visited its companion, resulting in a bit of a mess. They built tangled webs that interfered with each other. As if that wasn't enough, the flies that were supposed to be food for the spiders started reproducing faster than anticipated. Their larvae escaped from their container and covered the front window of the chamber. Over time, the spiders were completely hidden behind the larvae. Although this initial experiment didn't go well, one of the researchers involved in planning the spider experiment was still curious. In 2011, she got another opportunity to repeat the same experiment. This time, she sought assistance from other researchers. They decided to send a different species of spider into space and prepared four spiders, two for the ISS and two for Earth, allowing for result comparison. The goal was to expose the spiders to varying gravity conditions and observe their behavior. However, another twist appeared in the story. Initially, they believed they had four female spiders, but it turned out that two of them were actually males. Determining the sex of young spiders can be tricky, but fortunately, one male had already been sent to space while the other remained on Earth, enabling valuable data collection. The second experiment proved successful. The spiders were active. They built and dismantled webs, and even without the assistance of gravity, they spun new ones. Three cameras captured thousands of pictures, showcasing their hard work on the webs. Interestingly, it seemed that spiders created significantly more symmetrical webs in space than on Earth. The center of the webs was closer to the middle, and surprisingly, the spiders didn't always position their heads downward as they typically do on Earth. However, one significant factor made all the difference. Light. When the spiders on the ISS had a source of light, they weaved asymmetrical webs, similar to those found on our home planet. Light played a crucial role in orienting the spiders in space. The chamber's lamps were attached at the top. If the lights had been positioned differently, for example on the side, it would have been challenging to observe the effect of light on the symmetry of webs in zero gravity. When the lights were turned off, the spiders rested in random orientations within their webs. Yet with the lights on, they would orient themselves away from the light source, which meant downward. Hence, in the absence of gravity, light assisted them in orientation. This discovery was unexpected, because spiders can typically build their webs in the dark and capture prey effectively, even without light. Spider's web itself is such a cool thing wherever they are. It's like these creatures have small silk production factories inside them. Within their body, a thread is stored in the form of a highly concentrated liquid. And a regular garden spider can produce up to seven different types of silk, each having a unique combination of proteins. Each type of silk has a different purpose. For example, one type of thread makes the web elastic, which means the web absorbs the impact when insects collide with it. Another type of silk makes the thread flexible and strong, so it's more difficult to break. Some proteins found in the silk protect it from harmful bacteria and fungi, allowing the web to last longer. They also keep the silk moist so it doesn't dry out. Wow, imagine having a home where you don't have to buy anything extra to maintain it. Spider silk is lighter than cotton and incredibly thin, up to a thousand times thinner than human hair. But it's also insanely strong. I mean, it must be since that's what they rely on while living their everyday life. Whether they're preying on some wandering insect or trying to resist heavy rain and wind. But you wouldn't expect it to be stronger than steel, right? Of course, in reality, you don't come across steel that thin. But if you could find a piece with the same weight as spider silk, you'd see that it has similar strength when pulled or stretched. In fact, spider silk is five times stronger than steel of the same thickness. Spider silk is also super stretchy, able to stretch up to four times its original length without breaking. Plus, it remains strong even in freezing temperatures below minus 40 degrees F. The most common type of spider is the orb weaver. They're masters at building those webs you keep seeing in open areas. That's where they have a better chance to catch a tasty lunch. 
But since they choose such spots, their webs are more prone to damage. That's why these spiders have a fascinating habit. They often rebuild their entire webs every day, even if the current web seems perfectly fine. I wish I was this dedicated to maintaining my bedroom. These spiders actually do this because they want to be prepared for the evening when they patiently wait for their potential prey to get caught in their carefully set trap. At first, this might seem like a waste of time. After all, they need to invest a significant amount of protein to produce the silk that forms their webs. But even if an orb weaver spider doesn't catch its meal overnight, it usually has enough silk proteins to dismantle its old web and build a new one for the following night. As the spider removes the old web, it consumes the silk at the same time, and by doing that, recycles the proteins it contains. If you've ever observed a spider on its web, you must have noticed how attentively it responds to even the slightest vibrations. It turns out that spider silk can be finely adjusted to different sound frequencies, unlike any other material. When a spider builds its web, it doesn't just spin the silk and leave it as it is. The spider actually makes adjustments to the silk by changing how tight or loose it is and how different threads are connected. This way, it creates a web that can vibrate or make different kinds of sounds. The spider is like a musician tuning their guitar. This feather-legged lace weaver is called the garden center spider because it mostly enjoys humid greenhouse conditions. And it has a really cool way of catching insects. Instead of spinning sticky webs like other spiders, it uses electricity. It produces incredibly thin silk, almost at the nanoscale. And on its hind legs, this spider has special hairs that act like tiny combs. As the silk emerges from its body, the spider uses these hairs to comb and manipulate the silk. And here's where the magic happens. This process generates an electric charge. The threads of the silk are now crackling with electricity, so they come together to form little poofs that resemble fluffy balls of wool. These electrically charged poofs are a great way to trap innocent insects wandering around. When unsuspecting prey comes into contact with them, the electric charge causes the threads to cling to their bodies, making it almost impossible to get away. Female Darwin's bark spiders make gigantic webs that can stretch over rivers and lakes, which means they can reach over 80 feet across. It turns out such enormous webs are just a part of their genius plan to catch their prey. A super strong web that goes across the water like a bridge can capture large insects that gracefully fly above the water's surface, like dragonflies, and it's an impressive project that takes days to construct. These special lines go across the river and anchor the web firmly to each bank. There's no easy way out of this. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.